What's up guys, Justin here with DCGEssentials.com back with another Blender animation and movement tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use constraints in order to make gears that turn together whenever you move them inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so model credit for this gear is the steampunk gear from Sketchfab. And I will link to this in the notes down below. So this is a steampunk gear model by Darren McNerney 3D. Um, it's available for use with attribution. So if you want to download this and follow along, you can definitely do that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this gear and we're going to start off, we're going to rotate it. So we're going to do an R, Y, 90. And then I'm going to scale it down just a bit. And then we'll just go into our object and apply our rotation and scale. All right, so then I've also come in here and modeled out a handle. And the handle is very simple. It's just extruded shapes right here, just so that we have something to kind of link together. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to set up our rotation. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to link the rotation of this arm right here to our gear right here. And we want to set this up so that when we rotate the handle, the gear turns. And so what we want to do is we want to copy any rotation that happens to this object to our gear. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to add an object constraint to our gear called copy rotation. And we want to set the target of our rotation to this object right here, right? So now though, the problem is if we rotate this, Unless we lock it to an axis, this is gonna rotate no matter which direction we go, right? So I can rotate this along the Z axis and my gear is going to turn, but I can also rotate it along the Y and X axis. And we don't necessarily wanna do that. So what we wanna do is we wanna set a limit rotation function on our handle. So what that means is that means that if we add a limit rotation option to this handle, we can tell this to limit the rotation available on the X and Y axes. So this will only turn on the Z axes. So to do that, we're just gonna check the box for limit X and Y. And now, if I come in here and rotate this, notice how this won't let me rotate on the X or Y axes anymore. It'll only rotate on the Z axes, which is what we want. So now we have a gear that's gonna turn along with our handle. So now let's create another gear. And in fact, let's create copies of both of these. So I'm just going to do a shift click and I'm just going to do a shift D and just move these over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete out the constraints that are on here because we're going to use different constraints for these objects. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to rotate this along this axis by 90 degrees. Then we're just going to align this with our gear. So I'm going to move this over. I'm going to move it up and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to rotate it so that the teeth align. So we're just going to do an R, Y and we'll just rotate it to something like this. I'm not worried about it being exactly right. I just want these to turn together. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this maybe a little bit more like this. Maybe move it up a little bit more. So now our gear teeth mesh together. Right, so, but if we rotate this, nothing is happening with the other gear. So we need to link these together. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to set this up so that this transformation gets transferred to this gear, right? So this one is set up so that it turns, but we wanna set this gear up so that it turns as well. So the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna come in here and we're not gonna use a copy function we're gonna use a transformation function. And what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to basically link the movement of the object to this other object. And so the way that's gonna work is we're just gonna use the eyedropper right here and we're gonna link this object to this other gear. And so right now, nothing's gonna happen, right? So we haven't actually set any of this up. So what we need to do is we need to set our mapping of our movement. So in this case, for example, we want to map the movement of our Z axis of our first gear. So we wanna come in here and we wanna type in a value of 360 degrees in our Z axis. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna map this so that when this turns up to 360 degrees, the other gear is going to turn as well. 
And so what we need to do is we need to then set our map to. Well, remember that on this gear, we want our rotation to happen on the Y axis, right? So if I set this to be 360 degrees as well, and then rotate this, still nothing's going to happen. And the reason for that is because this axis right here is looking to the y-axis of our other gear. Well, this object isn't rotating on our y-axis, it's rotating on the z-axis. So, we need to set the source of our movement to the z-axis right here. Well, notice how now, if I rotate this in a certain direction, this gear is going to turn with us, but we still have a problem. And the problem is, if we rotate this, it's only going to turn up to 360 degrees, right? And then once we turn it further than 360 degrees, this gear stops, even though we're still moving the other gear. And it's also not moving in the other direction. And so what we wanna do in order to fix that is we wanna check this little box up here called extrapolate. And so what extrapolate is going to do is that's going to extrapolate beyond 360 degrees and beyond zero. So what that means is that means that any time that this rotates on the Z axis, we want to transfer that rotation to the Y axis of our other gear. So we're just going to check the box for extrapolate. Well now, notice how when I rotate, these gears are now turning together. And we have one more problem. And the problem is, if we look at these gears, so if we rotate this on the Z axis, this gear is turning the wrong direction, right? So the gear would be turning the other direction if the teeth were driving it. And so we can adjust that by going into our transformation and we just wanna set this to a negative 360 degrees instead of a positive. So then, now if you look at this, the gears are going to turn together. So whenever your gear turns in one direction or the other, the other gear is going to move along with this. So you could definitely do this with some rigging tools as well, but I like working with the object constraints because they give me a lot of control over limiting and other things like that. Obviously there's different applications for different times, but I'm really enjoying working with the constraints inside of Blender. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.